This is the sermon for October 17th. Um, it's from Mark 10. Jesus and his disciples were on the road, going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside and began to tell them what was happening, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes. They will condemn him to death. They will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, spit upon him, flog him, and kill him. And after three days, he will rise again. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward and said to him, What, teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. And he said, What is it that you want me to do for you? They said, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand, one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, Oh yeah. We Jesus said, The cup that I drink, you will drink. But to sit at my right or left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them. And their great ones are tyrants over them. But it's not so among you. But whoever wishes to be great must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first must be sl um, slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to serve, but to, uh, not to be served, but to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. Please join me in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our uh, text today has Jesus journeying to Jerusalem. And actually, he is very, very close. In Mark's gospel, there is only one more story um, in Jericho, actually, uh, between this and, um, and Jesus going into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And Jericho, uh, Jericho was along the easiest road to Jerusalem. There were two main routes to Jerusalem. One of them was to follow um, along near the Mediterranean Sea. The other one followed along the Jordan River to Jericho and then went west and up from there. And so that's apparently the route Jesus and his disciples are taking. Um, it says that there is a crowd traveling with him. Um, and, um, and it says that they were amazed, which might've been, um, the disciples and that those who followed were afraid. There are a lot of tensions. Jesus in the last few chapters has increasingly been challenged by the powers of the world. And he tells the 12, um, he takes them aside. It, it says, which implies that he's doing it privately. He tells the 12, look, the Son of Man is going to be handed over, flogged, and killed. And this is the third time in Mark's Gospel that he's done this. Um, and each of the previous times, the disciples have indicated that they don't really hear him. So this time, instead of Peter doing it, Peter's the one who messes up on his own the first time, or all of the disciples doing it collectively together, James and John get their moment in the sun. Um, this is one, there are only two stories, by the way, in Mark, where James and John do anything on their own. And this is, uh, this is one of them when they're called and put down their fishing nets is the other. And they say, Hey, Jesus, again, immediately after, um, Jesus has told us he's going to be killed, flogged, beaten, mocked, spit, uh, spit upon. Um, they say, Jesus. Uh, we want you to do whatever we ask. And he says, okay, what do you want? Grant us to sit, one at your right, one at your left, when you come in glory. In other words, to press the fast forward button, bzzz, and to skip all of the bad part and just get to the good stuff. I mean, what's what's the purpose? What's the point of, um, uh, of having anything else? And so um, Jesus says... Uh, 
you know, are you able to drink the cup that I drink? And they say, oh, we've totally got it. Again, immediately after Jesus has said he's going to be condemned to death, he'll be handed over to Gentiles, he'll be mocked, spit upon, flogged, and killed. Immediately after saying that, and he's and him asking, can you drink this cup? They say, we got this. We just want to sit at your right hand and your left hand in glory. We want to, we want to have the good parts. For James and John, their idea of what it means to be with Jesus, to follow Jesus, is the good parts, is to get to have um, the best seats at the table, to be the center of attention, to have, you know, the finest cuts of meat, to have fine designer clothes. You know, they're, they're, they're already looking to the end, and they are not following what Jesus' glory has been all through the Gospel of Mark. They're not getting it. They're not hearing what he's saying. When I think of this in, you know, the context of what does it mean for you? What does it mean for me? Um, one of the things that has seemed really apparent to me over the last summer and over the last fall um, is how many of us are still grieving how many of us still miss um, still miss the way, way life used to be? We miss not having to, um, you know, having, we miss not wearing masks. We miss um, being able to fly and have it be easy. We miss, um, we miss having casual indoor conversations. We miss not having to plan everything out. We miss, um, we sometimes miss friends uh, who have died. Sometimes we miss people when there have been um, arguments and disagreements and we can't patch things up. We miss the life. We're still grieving um, for, uh, for 2019. And some of us are looking, um, you know, or looking forward to a return to normal. Some others of us think that, there's going to be a new normal. Um, but a lot of us are grieving. We're stressed. Um, and we're reacting to that stress um, to the people around us. You know, the, the people who are experiencing uh, my stress and your stress are the people who, uh, who are the ones we encounter, which are also usually the people that we care about. Um, we don't have control. We don't have agency. We don't know what, you know, what's going to come next. Um, we live in uncertain times, and I don't love living in uncertain times. How does this have to deal with the gospel? James and John don't know what's going on. They've been following Jesus for his whole ministry, and... You know, they they don't know what's going on. And Jesus, a little bit here, reprimands them. We have the Job reading from the jo Divine Speech, um, from Job, parts of Job 38. I'd, I'd read all of 38, and, or 37 and 38, but uh, it does get a little bit long. Where um, God, God, you know, coming from a whirlwind, coming from a tornado, uh, says basically, you know, Job, I made the world. You didn't. You know, you don't understand what's going on here. In the midst of my grief process, in the midst of your grief grief process, it seems pretty clear that that we don't understand, um, and that this last year and a half has been a period that has reminded us that we're not in control. Now, to be honest. We've never been in control. You know, control is an illusion. Uh, God is God. God is sovereign. Um, God is the ruler of heaven and earth. Um, God is the one who knows who's going to be sitting at Jesus's right and left hand in glory. God is the one who knows, you know, what the cup entails. God is the one who is in control. God is the one who speaks in, um, from Job in the whirlwind. God is the one um, who 
uh, knows that James and John, as much as they want to press the fast forward and get to the good part, as much as we want to press fast forward and get to the good part, um, God knows that James and John, um, that they are, uh, that this isn't, you know, that this isn't what it means um, for Jesus's ministry, that this isn't what it means to be a follower of Jesus. Um, God emphasizes that for uh, Jane, or Jesus emphasizes that for following him, um, and sometimes he emphasizes by showing it and sometimes by telling it, here he tells it, that to follow Jesus, um, you must serve others. You must not put yourselves first. You must um, put others ahead of you. And that's, um, that's going to be hard for James and John. That's going to be hard for me. That's going to be hard for you. Um, but it is a reminder that following Jesus isn't about um, looking for myself first. It's not about me trying to be in control. It's about me trying to um, give of who I am for those that I meet. It's about me giving of who I am um, for sisters and brothers in Christ. And it is of that for you too. Amen.